So we are going to be covering a game that I played against Magnus from the World Blitz and Rapid in 2014 in Dubai. Now, this was round 10 of the World Blitzer. I think at this point, we we're both doing pretty well throughout the event, but this was, of course, a critical matchup. And unfortunately, like in many other instances, I had the black piece against Magnus. And as most people know, my score against him has not been remarkable. All right. So without further ado, let's jump right into the game. All right. So let me start the video. Let me make sure the sound is a little bit up. Uh, it might be a little bit soft on your end too, but I think it's okay. Sound good? I think sound is good, you guys. You can tell me. All right, so we get e4, e5. Now I have three knights, e6, d4. Now Magnus plays this. Uh, let, let me stop the video for a second and do some quick analysis. Magnus chooses to play this uh, scotch, which was a little bit of a surprise. And the reason it was a surprise that Magnus played this d4 and chose to play a scotch is because traditionally against me, he's played things like the Italian or the Spanish. And more importantly, we both worked with Gary Kasparov, so it was a little surprising to see that. So the game continues, pawn takes, knight takes, bishop c5. This is a line that I think both of us had looked at with Mag, looked at with Gary. Knight b3, bishop b6. Worth noting, by the way, when Magnus pauses for a few seconds here, if we look at the game just in this position after bishop c5, Magnus here was thinking about, did he want to play knight c6? Did he want to play knight b3? What exactly was the purpose? Now, it's also worth noting that previously in the world, I believe the world blitz in 2010, in um in moscow russia he had actually played this line with knight b3 bishop b6 and i believe queen e2 and bishop e3 scored some very nice victories it was a system setup that he used with a lot of success in that event so he probably was thinking about whether he wanted to play knight c6 or knight b3 so anyway we got knight b3 bishop b6 being played here by magnus knight c3 good knight f6 all pretty standard obviously plays bishop g5 again pretty normal so far nothing too crazy here i'm thinking for a second and actually i'm gonna pause the video so when i look up at the sky what i'm thinking here is i'm thinking about whether this is a normal order and what exactly is the difference because there are a couple different ways white can play this white can also go queen e2 first um as well as i think queen f3 and bishop f4 so many different options but he goes with bishop g5 which is why i start looking away i'm thinking okay so what am i gonna do here actually let me look at it from the black perspective as well because i was playing with the black piece in this game So I'm thinking here, and now finally, after looking away, I decide to castle. Just making sure not to play d6. It's also worth noting as well that the reason I was thinking and looking to the sky is that there was a game that uh, Magnus played in, I believe it was in China, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe I'm wrong. There was a game he had played against Etienne Bacro, where Bacro had actually played the wrong move order. And so in my mind, I was trying to make sure that I did not play d6 first, which is a little bit imprecise. So anyway, I castle here. So we get we get this queen f3 move and now i think for a bit and i finally play knight d4 and again the reason that i'm looking away at the sky for those of you guys who are wondering or not sky in this case but looking to the side is because in my mind i'm thinking i i believe in a previous game that i played in the european club cup and i want to say 2015 against uh, or no actually that was afterwards but there was a game that i played in the european club cup where i believe against lenny dominguez i played queen e2 and after knight d4 the game petered out into a quick draw and so this line was something that I had known even at the time, but I was trying to remember what the differences were in this position after queen f3. So I play knight d4 here. Magnus trades. I take back. How do I remember this game from so long ago? Uh, it was a very memorable game very memorable game okay so he castles which I start looking at the sky and I think here again I don't remember exactly what I was thinking about because bishop c3 is fairly obvious but I think in my mind I was just making sure that after takes queen takes c3 knight e4 wasn't a move so I'm thinking Way too many white shirts in the background while well, everybody's playing, you guys. This was in Dubai. This was in Dubai. So finally, I take. Takes. Obviously, white has a big pin on towards the knight on f6 and the queen on d8. 
So I look at the sky to make sure. And I suspect that when I look at the sky here, the reason I look at the sky is because I think in my mind, I was making sure that h6, bishop, h4, g5 wasn't like I wasn't going to end up in a lot of trouble um, or even d6 here, which is also a move. So that's, I think, the main reason I looked up at the sky. I think. I'm not 100% sure. So anyway, I play rook e8. Bishop c4 is played. Actually, you know what? I Now that I think about it, as you see, I don't have this completely memorized because I thought I played h6. Um, but now that I know I played rookie in the game, my instinct is that I didn't play h6 here because I thought that after h6, bishop h4, g5, bishop g3, I thought I was worse. So again, as I said before, I don't, I don't have this game completely memorized, but that's my assumption in terms of what I was thinking about at the time. So anyway, I go rookie eight. We got bishop c4 here. Play d6. Standard move, try to develop the bishop. Now, Magnus has a weird look, and I, I don't actually know why he has that look on his face. I assume that he he looks at the clock, and now he drinks he drinks a big Coca-Cola, because unlike Ronaldo, he actually likes Coke. Um, but I think more than that, I think Magnus started to realize after D6 that the position is not all that special. The way that he sort of backs up the body language, I even at the time, I remember thinking he's not super comfortable here in this position. But finally, he takes... Now I stare at the sky and the reason I stare at the sky for a half second is because if I take here with the pawn I thought maybe I have queen e7 c6 maybe queen a5 but then I came to my senses of course and realized that if I do this probably my attack is never really occurring here on the queen side and white's got a lot of ideas like queen g3 h4 h5 it's really really bad for black here so of course I come to my senses after about two seconds and I play queen takes f6 wait sorry let me uh let me go back a second we trade rookie one and now I play f5 which I was very happy about at the time because the only issue for black is the double pawns I get rid of the double pawns and then my pawn structure should be favorable here because only white has the double isolated pawns on c2 and c3 so Magnus thinks for a while again you can tell that he's not super comfortable his body language is not um it's not really all that he's not all that happy is that Judah in the back? Yes, I think that is Judah Polgar in the back. So Magnus plays Bishop D5. Now I do that little head bop. I think I'm just trying to figure out whether what, what exactly I think is going on here. So now I think for a bit. Time, by the way, this was 3 plus 2. So I am up 40 seconds here, which is a big, big plus. Um, but I figure it's a good time to use, use that time advantage, try to come up with a concrete plan. Magnus goes for another sip of the Coca-Cola. So now I take, he takes back with the bishop. I play rook e5, centralizing the rook. Maybe I have rook a5 here as well. Also dodging this idea with bishop h7 and rook e8. So very logical move, centralize the rook. Maybe bishop e6 is an idea. And it feels like black should be better. I think at this point during the game, I actually thought I was better here already. Magnus goes bishop d5, creating the wooden shield, of course. So now I trade. And I go king f8, stopping the rook from coming down to e8 or e7 here. So he goes rook e4. So I play c6, bishop b3. This is 2014. 2014. So again, it's still tricky to play here, but I still thought that I should be better. I go bishop g6, of course. Uh, and now I guard both pawns and f7 and h7. He plays h4. Try and maybe go g4 and h5 at some point. Trying to uh, complicate, complicate the situation. So now I play h5, stopping g4. If he goes g4, I trade and he has isolated pawns. So after h5, he plays king d2, trying to centralize the king. I play rook d8 here. Again, maybe idea just d5 and stopping c4. Plays, uh... What did he play there? Sorry, wait one second. I, I just lost my, my train of thought. What did he play? So this position after king f8. Okay, so I go d5, bishop, bishop, bishop d3 here. Oh, uh, the pawn of b7 is completely fine here. What is the arbiter doing? He's just walking back and forth. Now, again, at this point, I still thought I'm better, but the problem is that bishop d3 is a really important move. Um, so he goes king g7, a4, of course. Go b6, idea c5, maybe a6, b5 later, but nothing really special. We get g3. Now here I play c5. Bishop e2, again, trying to dodge the trade of the bishops and maybe go bishop f3 and target the pawn on d5. Now I go rook d6, just centralizing the rook. a5 by Magnus. Um... 
kind of a tough move here because on one hand I want to take but on the other hand I don't want to take now I think I make the move I play rook f6 to trade the rooks here which by the way I was very proud of myself for playing move like rook f6 I realized that I'm not actually winning here and I'm happy to uh to trade off pieces So Magnus makes that little look like he's not happy. He thinks the game is headed towards a draw. And he plays Bishop F3 to target the pawn on D5. Also, big shout out to Hans, who is in chat watching. Uh, congrats on a third win in a row against Alexei Sherov. Good luck in, in Sigmund as well. So here I think, and I go Rook D6 to guard the pawn against the Bishop takes D5 threat. By the way, Magnus getting quite low, down to 13 seconds here. Uh, but he still keeps his nerve. And one thing about Magnus that's really remarkable is the way he keeps calm even when he has no time. Like, this position, very easy to lose control. But he finds Bishop G2, just keeps the pressure on the pawn on D5. We get Rook D8 here, Bishop F3, Rook D, Rook D6, Bishop G2. Magnus is happy with the draw. He's down a lot of time. But now he plays Rook A4, which is kind of surprising here because I was pretty sure he'd make a draw. So I go Rook D6, guard both pawns. Now we get Rook F4 back. And now I decide, you know what? I have to try and be a hero and not make a threefold with Rook D8. So here I go B5, trying to expand on the queen side. Bishop F1 targets the pawn. Rook B6 guards. Bishop G2 back. So Magnus is very happy to make a draw here. And now I go Rook A6, trying to trick Magnus into taking D5, which gives me Rook D6, which would win the game. And meanwhile, I spy, by the way, you guys who are wondering who just decided to stand right there and get in the way. This is, of course, Jan Napomniachi standing right here over my shoulder. Just deciding to walk right up to the board and watch. Bishop f1, targets the pawn on b5. I go rook a2, target c2, bishop d3. Now we trade. Jan's decided, by the way, Jan has decided he's had enough. The game is going to be a draw. No need to watch anymore. I go king g6 we get um we get g4 here by magnus trying to open up the queen side so i take he takes king f5 g5 king e6 to guard the pawn of course the thing is white has a pass h pawn that he can push up the board so he goes rook g1 trying to put the rook behind the pass pawn very very logical move also stops rook a1 rook h1 for me as well so now i start to lose my mind here i go because I realize that I've made a slight mistake. So I go rook a3, idea to play b4. He goes king d2. So b4, we trade. Because again, both of us don't have time. I've got 12 seconds, he's got 7 seconds. So he goes rook g3, tries to trade the rooks, create the two connected pawns on the king's side. I go rook a1 to get behind the pawn. Rook h3, king f6, h5, king g7, h6, king h7. Put the king behind the passed pawn. He goes rook h4, targets b4 here. Go rook a6, threatening to win the pawn on h6 b4 king h6 rook b5 now i go rook f6 to target f2 king e2 now i check and we go back target the pawn takes takes and now this should be a draw with correct play we get c4 i play rook f1 c5 rook c1 rook behind the pass pawn king d2 and now we get this repetition and we agree to a draw here uh, very, very exciting game. Very, very back and forth, very up and down. Um, why didn't I do a Jigalko and call the Arbiter for a knockdown piece? Yes, of course, you guys. When Magnus, if we go back a few seconds and we look at this position, I mean, Magnus knocks it over. But um, as I said before, I will be very clear on this. Yeah, so you see, Magnus hits my clock. Now, uh, to be very clear, this th th there's no way that he loses the game for what he did. But if I go and call the Arbiter here, it's pretty Bush League. I'm just going to be very, very blunt. That's It's just Bush League. Um, there's no need for it. So um, so that that's why you just don't do it. Um, and and so that's that's a simple answer to why I didn't say it. Because it's, it's, just, it's just Bush League. It's just not... It's just not what you do, plain and simple. So anyway, I just want to go over this video very quickly, just do a sort of light recap. Um, I will be doing more of these, but this was from round 10 of the World World Blitz Championship played in Dubai in 2014. Um, 
as you can see there are all these tables around us basically they had this big auditorium where a bunch of us went and played i mean you can see Savidler still in the background you can you can see judah polgar the greatest female chess player of all time in the background as well uh jan of course made it made a surprise appearance etc etc i believe that in the blitz magnus one i think although i thought jan came pretty close i could be wrong on that um so so yeah what is bush league it just means something that's really really low class you just don't do it you just don't do it plain and simple so anyway, I did want to do some, I'm going to be doing more and more of these sorts of recaps, um, but I did want to show you guys this as well, just so, uh, just so you, you, we get to do some, do some fun content. All right, you guys. So on that note, um, oh, sorry, by the way, Magnus was first, uh, Nep was second and I was, I guess I was third. That's right. I did finish third, which I didn't realize. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, the thing that makes it very hard to play against Magnus in this game, I think illustrates it is that if we go back to this, this point, I'm just going to show you somewhere around here. Um, I'm very confident. I feel very good. All the way even here when he's got like six seconds and I have 29 seconds. I feel very, very good about the game. But Magnus keeps it together in a way that almost nobody else does. And in fact, even here, I still think, I, I still think I'm probably winning. Maybe not winning, but I have good winning chances. And it's only once, once we get to this point that I start to realize that I've kind of made some mistakes. Made some mistakes here. And once he goes Rook G3, you'll see that I have the very sort of the, um, the, the, what's, I, maybe I shouldn't say this, but I have that sort of the, the constipated look where I'm like, yeah, it's not very good. And I, I kind of realize that suddenly it's gone the wrong way. And this is one thing that I will say about Magnus that separates him from everybody else is his ability to play these ridiculous end games, even here with no time left, to play it very, very precisely in a way that no one else could. So he finds the absolute best moves where not only, um, not only is he saving the game, but he potentially has winning chances as well, which is what makes it so so difficult uh but as i said before also it's always a lot of fun to play magnus in these events and this was a very exciting game and i really did enjoy it so all right you guys that is going to be our, our one game our, our one recap we're going to do today um of a game that i played uh in the past we're going to be doing more of these obviously but this is just the first one do we're doing for right now